Hello everyone, today we'll be going over chapter 2 of AP World History from 10,000 BCE to 3000 BCE. Some of the contents we'll be going over today is Agricultural Revolution, which will cover development and domestication, comparing agriculture, where we will go over common patterns and variation, and finally, Agriculture Spreading, where it will cover the triumph and resistance and the culture of agriculture. First, the Agricultural Revolution. It happened about 2,000 years ago, and Neolithic or Agricultural Revolution refers to the deliberate cultivation of particular plants as well as the taming and breeding of particular animals. A whole new way of life gradually replaced the earlier practices of hunting and gathering in most parts of the world. This revolutionary transformation of human life provided the foundation for growing populations, settled villages, cities, states, empires, civilizations, animal-borne diseases, horse-drawn chariot warfares, writing, literature, and much more. Keep in mind, the most revolutionary aspect of the age of agriculture was a new relationship between humankind and living things. Men and women were not simply finding natural resources, they, actively, they were actively changing nature. For example, corn. Corn was once with a cob that was about just an inch, and later in the years, it became one measuring about six inches. Cows who gave more milk and sheep who grew, that grew more wool. Domestication, the taming and the changing of nature for the benefit of humankind. Some downsides to domestication were many domesticated plants and animals could no longer survive in the wild and humans lost their hunting and gathering skills. Intensification is to get more for less, in this case more food and resources from a much smaller area of land than was possible with gathering and hunting technology. Next we'll be going over comparing agriculture in the beginnings. We'll be going over the preview, common patterns, and variations. The Neolithic or agricultural revolution occurred separately and independently in scattered parts of the world. This all happened remarkably at the same time around 12,000 to 4,000 years ago. Why was the human, why was the agricultural revolution so late in this, in the history of humankind? In what different ways did the agricultural revolution take shape in its various locations? Some common patterns that were shown in agricultural revolutions were, there was a reason why agriculture flourished at the end of the last ice age. A process of global warming began 16,000 years ago. The end of the last ice age occurred with the migration of Homo sapiens. Again, Homo sapiens are the categories of human species across the planet and creating new conditions for agriculture to become possible. Climate change caused certain mam mammals to go extinct, the animals mostly depended on, but created a chance for various plants to flourish. Gathering and hunting peoples already had a deep knowledge of the natural world and the ability to control it. There were new opportunities occurred when conditions improved. New knowledge and technologies emerged as human communities explored and exploited the changing environment. The disappearance of large animals, growing populations, newly settled ways of life, and fluctuations in the process of global warming. Keep in mind, if you're to go to a place that is filled with snow, you wouldn't see much animals or plants surviving. Also keep in mind that they all represented pressures or incentives to increase food production and minimize the risk of life in the new era. Next, variations. The first to experience a full agricultural revolution was the Fertile Crescent, an area sometimes known as Southwest Asia. The cold and dry spell between 11,000 and 9,500 BC is what triggered the transition to agriculture. The cold and dry spell was a temporary interruption in the general process of global warming. Archaeological evidence suggests that the transition to a fully agricultural way of life in the region took place sometime within as few as 500 years. Some archaeologists' findings were sun-dried mud bricks, a mixture of sand, clay, water, and constant temper. Temper is also temperature. The appearance of monuments or shrine-like buildings displays of cattle skulls and more elaborate human burials, including the removal of the skull. More sophisticated tools archaeologists also found were sickles, a single-handed agricultural tool designed with variously curved blades and typically used for harvesting. Polished 
polished axes, flint axes that have been polished, and awls, a small pointed tool used for piercing holes, especially in leather. There was also domestication in Africa. The eastern part of what is now the Sahara in present-day Sudan is where domestication was unfolding in the African continent. The cattle were domesticated in this region about 1,000 years ago before they were separately brought under human control in the Middle East and India. Domestication spread toward northwest, northeastern Africa into the southeast, southwest Asia. In Africa, animal domestication preceded the domestication of plants, while elsewhere in the world, it was the other way around. Now there were domestications in Americas. The domestication of plants in the Americas occurred separately in a number of locations. Without goats, sheep, pigs, cattle, or horses, the peoples of the Americas lacked sources of protein, manure, and power that were widely available to societies in the Afro-Asian Eurasian world. People in the Americas relied mainly on hunting and fishing. The Americas lacked the rich cereal grains that were widely available in Afro-Eurasia. Variations around the world. While Middle Eastern societies quite rapidly replaced their hunting and gathering economy with agriculture, which took 3,500 years in Mesoamerica, Eurasia's east-west axis meant that agricultural innovations would, could spread more rapidly because they were entering roughly similar environments. Next, the globalization of agriculture. We'll be going over triumph and resistance, which we'll be talking about the ups and downs of agriculture and the culture of agriculture, where agriculture around the world spread and created new traditions and culture. Here's the preview. From the various places it originated, agriculture spread to much of the rest of the earth. This extension of farming spread by diffusion, which refers to the gradual spread of agricultural techniques, plants and animals, but without the extensive movement of agricultural people. Neighboring groups exchanged ideas and products in a down the line pattern of communication. A second process involved the slow colonization or migration of agricultural peoples as growing populations pushed them outward. Triumphant resistance. As the people around the world spread different languages, they also spread agriculture. The globalization of agriculture was a prolonged process lasting 10,000 years or more after its first emergence in the Fertile Crescent. The people of the west coast of North America North America, Arctic regions, and southwestern Africa also maintain their gathering and hunting way of life into the modern era. Some of those who resisted the swelling tide of agriculture lived in areas unsuitable to farming, such as harsh desert or Arctic environments. Others lived in regions of particular natural abundance. Some choices they made were some societies found it easier to resist agriculture if they were not in their deck line of advance of more powerful agricultural people. The reasons why they chose to resist it was they preferred the freer life of their Paleolithic ancestors. They preferred to live a normal and traditional life. Common era was the global spread of agriculture that had reduced gathering and hunting peoples to a small and dwindling minority of humankind. After the agricultural revolution, the future almost everywhere lay with the farmers and herders and with the distinctive societies that they created. Next, the culture of agriculture. The agricultural revolution led to an increase in human population as the greater productivity of agriculture was able to support much larger numbers. On a global level, scholars estimate that the world's population was about 6 million around 10,000 years ago. Before the agricultural revolution got underway and shot up to some 50 million by 5,000 years ago and 250 million by the beginning of the common era. Early agricultural societies lay in their growing impact on the environment as farming and herding peoples deliberately altered the natural ecosystem by removing the natural ground cover for their fields, making use of irrigation and grazing their now domesticated animals. The advent of more intensive agriculture associated with city-based civilizations of only hiding this human impact on the landscape. Thank you for listening and I hope you learned more about agriculture.